Okay, today we're going to continue talking about counting coins. And we started um, last unit, and then we continued again last week. Um, this is new to us. In, in first grade, you counted dimes and nickels and pennies, and you counted light coins. But now we've begun to mix the coins, and we've added in the quarter. And we've got several things that are very, very, very important. Let me tell you something right now. If you are having difficulty with counting coins, you need to practice every night for about five minutes. Not any longer than that. I'm not asking you to, to practice for a long period of time. But you need to practice about five minutes. Your parents need to throw some coins out and um, get you to practice for about five minutes. But it needs to be done every night. That's how we get good at something. We don't get good at something by cramming the night before we have a test. We get good about by a little bit of practice every day. That's the same thing you should be doing with your math facts. A little bit, about five minutes every day. A little bit of practice every day. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is, is um, I've got issues with my throat, so I'm sorry for the coughing and the spitting and sputtering. But here we go. Let's look at it today and let's talk about some things that we're going to do. Okay, here we go. We're going to pretend that Dad said, here you go, I'm gonna, here's my change out of my pocket. And these coins fall out onto the table. These coins just fall out of the table out of Dad's pocket and he says, if you can count these coins, then you can have them. Well, that's a good deal, right? That's a really good deal. I want to count those coins because I'd like to have them. Here are the strategies that we must use when we're counting coins. Here's the first thing you need to do. When you see these coins, the first things you need to do is sort them so that all the coins that are alike are together. And I, here's a quarter, and I'm going to put them together. Here's a penny and another penny. Here's the pennies. I'm going to put them. Here's a dime. I'm going to put these dimes together. There's a nickel. Here's some more nickels over here. I'm going to put them all together. That is the very first thing that you need to do. You need to make sure you sort them. Sort them so that those that are alike are the same. Okay? Then the second thing you're going to do is you are going to put them in order from greatest to least. The coin with the greatest value to the coin with the least value. You're not messing with your iPad. Your eyes are on me, please. So which one of these coins has the greatest value, everybody? The quarter. So I'm going to begin with the quarter, and I'm going to put it way over here. And do I have any more quarters? No. no. So now my net, my coin with the next greatest value is a dime. So I'm going to put my dimes. How many dimes do I have? Three. Yes, I do. I have three. Ooh, I should not have that in my hand. I have three, so I'm going to put these three dimes together. And the coin with the next greatest value is the nickel. Everybody? Nickel. What's the value of this nickel? Five. Five what? Yes, five cents. Absolutely. Then my coin with the with the least value is the penny. Absolutely, it is the penny. What is the value of a penny? One cent. Thank you. One cent. Absolutely, one cent. So then I'm going to put my pennies down here at the end. No problem. So I sorted, and then I put them in order from, from greatest to least. Now, I just ask you the value of those. I want you to make sure you place that value on them so that you remember what those are. While we are learning, we are going to make sure that we put those values, we're going to write them. If these were on paper or even if they're on our iPad or even if we're using real coins. If we have a dry erase marker with real coins, we can um, do that. And so I'm putting that value right on top of those. I'm going to put them right on top of those. So here we go. Now, the next thing that is important, the third and final thing, is 
we're going to begin to um, count so that we can figure it out. We know that the value of this quarter and how much, and when I count one quarter, I have how much, everybody? 25. 25 cents. Hello, everybody. 25 cents. Absolutely. I have 25 cents. Now, here's the big thing. You need to know that when you change coins, you change counting. When you change coins, you have to change counting. You must change counting. So now we were counting by 25s. We were counting by 25s. Now we're at 25 and now we're going to start counting by 10s. This is difficult, I know. But you need to listen. Parents, here's where you can help out a lot. When we go from a quarter to start counting a different coin, a dime, if we're going from quarters to dimes and one quarter to a dime in particular, a dime is worth 10, so the only number that's changing is the number in the tens place. So if we're at 25 and we go 10 more, that amount is going to be what? 35. 35, exactly. We're going 10 more. The only number that's changing is the number in the tens place. So if we're at 35, then we go to? 25. Beautiful. And now we're still counting tens. We haven't changed our counting yet. So if we're at 45, 10 more is? 25. But here I go. I'm about to change to nickels. Do you see that I'm drawing those lines? So that I can remember that if I change coins, I have to change counting. That's why I'm doing those lines. So now, I am at 55. I'm going to start counting by fives. In my head, I could do this. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. The next one is 60. Absolutely. 55, 60, 65, 65, 70, 75. And I'm going to draw a line because I'm changing coins. I'm going to change counting. I am at 75. I'm going to begin to count by ones. 75. One more is 76. Then 77. And 78. So the value of this collection of coins is how much, everybody? 78. Thank you. Again? 78. Yes, 78 cents. I can write that two ways. I can write it with a cent symbol. And a cent symbol looks like this. It is the letter C because we spell cent with a C with a line through it. So I can write 78 cents. When I use a cent symbol, it comes at the end. end. Or I can write it with a dollar symbol. I can write it with a dollar symbol. A dollar. How many dollars do we have? Zero. 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 Then I'm going to put the decimal and 78. Does, can I put it, now do I put a cent sign? No. No, remember, a dollar sign and a cent sign never, never, never go together. You either use the cent sign or you use the dollar sign. So, we're going to continue practicing. I'm going to go ahead and cut off, but this is going to help you. Listen to it again at night. Listen to it with your parents so that your parents can help you out as you count. Thank you, parents. We appreciate you.